Hey guys, thought I would give a six month update on my Neodin YY1 pick and place machine. I've picked about 20,000 components with this thing, roughly. Uh, so I figured I would just share what's worked well, what hasn't, um, yeah, and what issues I've had there, uh, basically. So let's get started. So the, the biggest issue and something I'm actually going to replace today is the needle on this thing that actually, I can't really focus it, but the needle there, which drops down and advances the tapes, um, has not been very um, reliable in the sense that when I go to fire it for the first time, it doesn't, it doesn't engage. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to do the manual, um, the manual needle bump here. And so I'm tapping it, keep tapping, nothing, still nothing, and sometimes I've had to engage that a few times, Let's see if it'll actually, normally it would fire by now. So, long story short, I'm not going to keep tapping that. I reached out to Neodin, and uh, we did a couple of troubleshooting things, and they suggested that I needed to replace it. So, they sent a replacement uh, free of charge. Uh, this is still under warranty, obviously, so um, I'll give them credit. Their customer service, at least on getting a replacement part, was um, very quick. I, th I think the shipping from China took like three days or something to get this in. So hopefully that fixes the issue. Um, but what would happen was even, there it goes. Now it's engaging. So what would happen is, is if I started a new run, you know, it would come over and it wouldn't fire, but it, it would think it did, and then it would come down and try and pick up something that wasn't there and it would fail multiple times. So what I was doing uh, in the meantime to kind of work around until I got a replacement was just to manually make sure this thing's firing and then immediately start my program. And occasionally it would still wouldn't fire on the first one, but then it would, and then once the program was running, I didn't really have any issues with it not firing. I don't know, it was weird. So that, that's been the biggest issue. Um, kind of a weird cosmetic thing that I've had issues with is these are two LED lights, and when it has a part on the end of the nozzle, uh, it lights up to show that you have you know something on there. This one, for whatever reason, doesn't light up anymore. It doesn't affect anything, it's just a visual cue that it has something stuck on the end of the nozzle, but that one doesn't work. Other than those two things, and uh, occasionally this thing will be really slow to boot up. That's been kind of the last like month or so. It, I mean, it still boots up, it just seems it's just slow, like it's taking forever to think about it. So I'll monitor that, but outside of that, once I've gotten past the needle issue, um, it's worked fine. Like I have, you know, other than your normal random pick and place issues where it misses picks apart or something like that um, also to give you an idea this is the miss pick tray I have not emptied that thing as far as I can remember out of 20,000 parts or 20,000 components so this is how many pieces or parts components that it's failed to pick and then you know discarded out of 20 you know out of 20,000 they're about Turn this without spilling it because I'm looking through the camera. So, I mean, it's a decent amount, but it's not like it's missing every single one. And even with like a high end pick and place machine, you know, it's going to have some mixed miss picks here and there. This is just kind of the nature of the business, but um, obviously, the more higher end pick and place you get, that's less of an issue, but it can't happen. So, anyways, um, that's kind of the rundown. The peeler system. Still been working fine. It's still really finicky, especially with like, um, you know, these. I can't really. I'm not gonna be able to show you very well, but like the really thin, small black tapes. Those are the ones I have the most issue with, because there's sometimes there's that metal spring that, or uh, yeah, whatever you want to call it, metal spring that pushes up on it. Doesn't give a whole lot of tension, and so 
still occasionally when it's engaging the tape peeler for even a different piece of tape, it'll still kind of increment those occasionally. I've got these kind of dialed in, but those are the ones I give the biggest issue with. The paper tapes I have almost no issues with. They basically just work perfectly every time, you know, other than like just a random one every once in a blue moon, but. So yeah, um, overall, still pretty happy. I mean, I couldn't have made as many panels as I do without this thing. Um, you know, I have several different types of panel boards that I make. They have anywhere from two to 400 components on each one. And like I said, I've probably done 20,000 components to this thing so far. Um, yeah, and I mean, it's done its job. You have to fight through it a little bit, but uh, still pretty happy with the machine. Anyways, I'm going to replace this needle. I'm gonna do it on camera just in case somebody else runs into this. I've not done this, there's no instructions with this. But there's only two screws that hold it on, and then you plug it in. So I can't imagine it's too too difficult. Hopefully that's not famous last words. Um, but we'll we'll see. So follow along, see if I fail at this, or if I have any issues. That way, if you ever run into this, um, at least you'll have a guide of what, either what to do or what not to do. So let's get started. Okay, as best I can tell, there's two screws that hold this thing on, or, and one's back here on the back side, and the other one's right here. So hopefully you can see that on camera. And then there's a plug here that we'll have to unplug. I have the machine turned off. Um, I don't know if it's going to be... There's not a lot of give on that, so getting that off might be a... I apologize if my hands get in the way. I don't really have any other good way of... Okay, that wasn't that bad. That popped right out. Okay, and let's grab another Allen wrench here. Try and find the right size. Nope. Okay, there we go. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Okay, that's one, and then the other one should be there. I don't know. So this thing is kind of in the way, and I'm hoping I can just do that maybe. How in the world? Because you have to be able to get the nut or the, get it out. Oh, that sucks. Um, so. You know, the issue is you have to turn an Allen key in here, but I also have to get the, I have to replace the screws. So I'd have to be able to take it all the way out and with the shaft in the way. Um, that ain't going to work. So I'm going to take the stop off. Maybe if I can find the right size Allen key. Um, okay, I've taken the stop, oh, I'm taking the stop off. And the, the only thing I get, like I said, I don't know if this is how you're supposed to do it, but this kind of makes sense, is that I'm going to take this spring off and then hopefully... Oh no, that still has a stop there. Um, wow, that is not into it, like... <laughs> you, I think you basically have to disassemble this whole thing just to... Just to get it off. Oh boy. Okay, well. Take this off. This thing basically falls apart because one of the one of the tests they had me do before they sent the replacement was kind of take this apart to see if it still moved. Um, like if something was binding it up and it wasn't, which meant it was basically something with the electronics or the solenoid. Um, okay, now let's take the spring off. Or attempt to take the spring off. <laughs> basically, have to completely disassemble this. Okay. Okay. Woo! Oh, there's that as a metal thing. Jeez Louise. I hope you can see all this. Just to get this off. Okay. 
That's the old one. Okay, I've reassembled the old one just so I have all the parts basically. I did, I dropped one of these screws. It's on the floor somewhere, I'll have to find it later, but um, just in case I need to get parts off of this at some point in the future, it's all put back together. Now to put the new one on. Okay, I've partially disassembled this already, just so I can try and get it on here. Okay, so I'll put it through there. And take a screw. So with my thumb, I'm holding up the magnets, and then down here, there's a, like a little guide uh, that goes in there. And they told me when I was testing the other one, you don't want that to fall out because all the pieces are really hard to get back in there. So at the very least, make sure you're holding onto that because if everything falls out, you're kind of in trouble. <laughs> okay, I've got the bottom one on. I'm gonna try and put this up in here. Okay. The actual needle bit. Getting all this lined up is a real kind of pain in the butt. Come on. Jeez Louise. So yeah, the easiest way to get easiest way to get that all lined up is to just stick a smaller Allen key through and get all the holes lined up of all three layers because you have this outside the needle part then you have the ram and then you have the guide in the back and all three of those have to line up while you're all while you're holding it in place so nothing falls out okay jeez. trying to do this I don't obstruct nope strip obstruct the view okay and then the last one is should just be okay and then plug it in carefully hopefully that's still focused get that lined up Okay, I think that's in. All right, it's back together. We'll test this out and see if it works. I'm gonna turn it on. Can I see anybody like the screen doesn't kick on right away? I think maybe the connector on the back is getting, I don't know. So I press on the connector, then it, it seems to turn on. Okay, so a manual test. I'm gonna move it away so I'm not smacking this into the... All right, moment of truth. I'm gonna hit the needle button. And let's see if it kicks on the first try. First try! Boom. All right. Well, that was an adventure. So before I actually uh, use this, I'll, I have to go through and calibrate the needle and make sure, you know, with the test paper so the camera knows exactly where it's coming down on since I've, you know, unscrewed it and screwed it back in. But okay, so that was an adventure. That's how you do that. 
Um, you basically have to partially disassemble it. You don't need to remove the stop. I, I realized this uh, little plastic piece on the side, but you do have to take most of this apart in order to get to that one screw that's behind this. So, all right, thank you for watching. Hopefully uh, you find that uh, useful information, especially if you, you're running into the same issue with your own machine. And like always, if you have any questions, let me know and I'll do my best to answer them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.